Hey guys, it's May May, and today we are doing the super easiest project I think I've ever seen on Pinterest, and I had to do it. Here is what we're making. It's a wreath that's made from paper napkins. Yep, I saw two of these online. The first one I saw, I think, is what got me. It was a... Um, wreath made with zebra printed napkins it was so cool but i was shopping with my aunt recently and we went to tuesday morning and we saw all the napkins they have and it sparked me i was like oh my goodness i love these napkins i can make that craft so i picked up some of these guys now i have tried to do a lot of kind of thinking about how to make this be just the most super simple craft you just sit down make it in a few minutes and have a cute project made so here's what i've come up with for your napkins, although I think you could use probably any pattern you want. By the way, these were like $2.99, and I got, um, how many are in here? 36 in each pack, and I probably brought, bought way too many, but I always tend to do that. For the napkin, the trick is you want to make sure you have a square napkin. That is going to matter. A rectangle is not going to give you the same look as a square one will. Now, my camera's probably going to go all shades of orange because I'm doing fall colors here, so it's going to want to do that. But here, this is so simple. You're going to take your napkin. One thing, I know I'm talking a lot about the napkins, but this matters, okay? One thing you want to know is you want your pattern to be all the way to the edge of the napkin because that's what's going to show. So when you're picking them out, don't worry too much about what's in this area here, but all of this is going to matter, okay? Here's what you do. Don't close your eyes. This is how fast this is, okay? You're going to take the napkin, and with the pattern side up, you're going to press down into the center, okay? From the back side, we're going to do a little twist, make a sort of flower, then open this pattern back up, like so, okay? And then we're going to poke it into a grapevine wreath. You're just going to find a spot and poke it. Now, I'm just going to take a tool of some sort. I'm going to try my bone folder, see what that does. Could use a pencil. You don't really want to poke a hole in your napkin, but you just want to poke that in and have it do that. <laughs> Does that make sense? It just kind of shows out. Now, if you had napkins that were the same color on both sides, that'd probably be even better, but I don't have that. I just have the one color napkin. All right, let's get another one. You're going to open it up, poke the center, do a little twisty thing, okay, just to give yourself something to poke, and then go right next to it really close and poke it into the grapevine wreath. I think it's easier with my fingers to do the poking. And then open it. Look, see what that's doing? Oh my goodness, y'all. <laughs> I'm telling you, I like these kind of projects. Also, notice we're not using any glue. You can hot glue this in. If you want this to be a permanent wreath, something that you'll use from year to year, or if it's a maybe you're making a gift for someone and you want to put some glue in there to hold it, there's nothing saying you can't. But you don't have to because if you decide you want to change this, you can turn it into anything you want. You can make it like this and then take these napkins out. And maybe you want to make it to match your Thanksgiving table. Or you want to make it to match a Christmas um, table or anything. Your Christmas decorations. And you just have one wreath to do it with. You don't have to buy a new wreath every time. How cool is this looking? Let's turn it around. It's so easy. Pattern facing up, poke your finger down, make a little twist in the back. So enough for you to poke it in. Lift this up, find a spot, and poke. Now, I'm thinking the trick to making this look good is to poke it full. See how full that's looking? I'm going to go all the way around and do this same thing over and over and over again. That is it. This is going to be a quick one, y'all. But I think it's going to look really, really neat. I think I'm going to be glad we tried this one together. You can do a search and look for um, paper napkin wreaths, and you'll probably find that one I saw with the zebra, because I'm telling you, I only saw two all over the internet. I don't remember who made that one. I didn't. I should have got her information or, or his. I don't know who did it, but it was so cool. So twist it. Pop that up. Poke it in. And I'm just using my fingers, but you can use a pencil. Maybe you had a pencil with the eraser or something. That would probably work if you needed to poke it in further. Let me show you that. Look at that, y'all. All right, I'm going to do that all the way around, and when I'm done, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. So I'm about halfway through, and it's kind of started to hurt my fingers, so I wanted to show you something. The, the Getting the napkin ready is no big deal, but poking it down into the grapevine as you work around kind of hurts. So I'm taking a pen and kind of putting in one end and then poking it with the pen instead of my fingers. 
just because it's getting a little tender and that gets them in there just fine. One other thing I want to tell you is when you buy your wreath, try to find one that's really round. It's hard to with a grapevine wreath because they're a natural wreath, but I think when they're really round, you'll get a better look for the finished project. Unless you want an oval shape, just make sure whatever shape your wreath is, is true to the way you want it to come out. I saw somewhere, I didn't really care, I saw, I've saw i seen some wreaths where with grapevines when you're covering the whole thing up, I don't really care for how they kind of go oblong, and they don't mean to, but grapevines are natural, so they kind of do that. So... We're getting there, guys. The other thing I want to say is this. You could so do this with, like, styrofoam and straight pins or um, one of those wreaths that are kind of grassy. I forget what they're called. Like a raffia wreath. Do you remember those? We used to make a lot of stuff in the fall with those when I was younger. So you could do that with one of those and some straight pins. That would work. So, guys, check this out. It's really hard for you to see in the camera because you know I don't have a lot of filming space, but I'm going to spin it around. And look at that. Isn't that cool? Now, I'm not in love with how much white is showing. Like, see all that white? Let me find a good spot. Here's a good spot. See all this white? All you have to do is move it around. Just play around. When you get it into place onto the wall, wherever you're going to put it, remember, this is an inside wreath. This is not for outside because this one will be destroyed in no time as soon as water hits it. But just move them around, and when you get it where you want it to go, just kind of tuck and turn, and you can hide a lot of that white if you don't like it. But then again, depending on the colors you use, if you use something that's not, you know, as beige on one side as mine is, it'll be fine. And I don't hate the white show, and I think it's super cute. How stinking easy and how cute. And let's see, I had a 36 pack, and I used two, four, I used 32 of them to make the wreath. So I didn't need both packs that I picked. I'm going to hang it on the wall and take some pictures to show you. But I sure hope you guys enjoyed this. While I was doing this, I thought, wouldn't this be cute to do for a little girl's birthday party? Like, you could put this together in seconds before the party with their napkins or with the theme from their party. And hang it on the wall or have it as a centerpiece. Super cute. All right, guys, let me know what you think. See if you'll make one of these. If you do, head over to our Facebook group called May May Made It and So Did I and show us your creation. I can't wait to see them. All right, hang around for pictures. You'll get to see what it looks like hanging. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.